Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Johanna and for those of you who are new here, welcome. And for those of you who are returning, welcome back. Here on my channel I do planner and planner related videos, DIY tutorials, budget videos, and the occasional new release video of items that I've listed to my Etsy shop. And if that is of interest to you, please consider subscribing to my channel and if you hit that little notification bell, you'll always be notified of when I do load a new video. Also commenting, sharing, and liking this video does help my channel grow and is truly appreciated. So we are doing our next lesson. I want to say it's eight. That sounds right. But um, this is the DIY workbook for um, hand lettering that I did. As usual, that video will be linked in the description box below. Uh, as I do if I remember, I like to start every one of these videos with if you have any sort of lettering experience, this is not going to be the video series for you, at least not yet. Uh, this is truly for people who are learning the strokes, learning the fundamentals, and I am a beginner. I am not an expert. And if you've seen any of the other videos, you know that already. <laughs> so if you are level zero or level 0.5, then definitely follow along. The playlist for this is linked below if you want to start from the very first um, lesson. But for today's lesson, what we're going to do is I've already got a jump on it. So um, right before I started filming, I did this right here. I started with my big E. I wrote the alphabet. And for this week, uh, we're just going to do the single E versus the double E like we've been doing. I've done my alphabet and then I practice all of my strokes. And I already pulled out some pens and I just wanted to do some testing. So what I want you to do is I want you to pause the video and go ahead and do your practice sets where you're going to do the upstroke and the downstroke, the overturn and the underturn, the compound and the reverse, the ascender, the descender, the oval, and the reverse oval. You don't have to change colors. You can use whatever writing utensil you have, but once you're done with your practicing, go ahead and bring me back and we will start on the lesson. Alrighty, so now that you've gotten your hand all warmed up, you are mentally prepared for the lesson. Um, two weeks ago when we were working on or starting to start focusing on letters, we worked on some of the easier ones, which comprised of basically these strokes right here. So that was the M, the N, and the U. I think that's what we focused on. This week, we're going to be focusing on some other letters. So I think we'll be able to do the F and the H. Oh, no, the I was in that first one as well. And the J, the L, the T, And maybe the Y. And the reason why I'm looking at the alphabet and I'm, I'm trying to focus is I really want to avoid any of the weird shape letters like R and S because they actually don't really comprise of these or anything that has an oval in it because that's what we're going to be tackling next week. And so I think we should be all right with those letters. Now, as you know, we are only practicing, at least at this point, our lowercase letters. Next week, we'll be working on the lowercase letters that have the ovals. And then the week after that, I think we'll tackle some of these weird letters that aren't really comprised of any of this. And then we'll start slowly comprising, or we'll start slowly adding in some of the large letters. Now, I haven't even learned that yet, so that is something that we'll be learning together as actually most of this has been but for this let's go ahead and focus on and just to be on the safe side let's put the letters here that I underlined and I'm hoping this is in frame so that you can see it and that way we can continue to practice some of the easier letters and then we can add some of these new ones in 
don't know that that'll spell any words, but that's okay. We're not really about that right now. So um, as I talked about two lessons ago when we started practicing actual letters versus just doing strokes, again, be aware of one, how you're holding your pen, and two, that more often than not, you're going to want to add in a lead in and a lead out. These are how you're going to be connecting your lines or your, your letters. Now, from what I've seen, you would think you would, and you could, because I just saw a video where she did, where you would just come up and start with your letter and then just continue like that. And you, and you certainly can do that. But more often than not, I see where they start and then they actually come off to the side and then they come down and sort of join them. Now, I haven't heard why. I don't know why there is that explanation or an explanation of why you do that, but more often than I see this way, people sort of work in that. So this is an F and again we want to lead into it. We want to do our letter and then we want to make sure that we come out either that's going to be the end of the word or we're going to have to go right into a, another letter. So let's do that letter F again and then come out and you kind of want to make these sort of at the same curve so that it just looks very fluid because like this one and this one, I mean, it, it doesn't look bad. And I mean, we're beginners, so, you know, we're going to get as good as we're going to get. But as we continue on with this lesson series, uh, there are just more and more things and now we need to try to remember and incorporate. So go ahead and, well actually let's do one more letter. Now with the letter H, you can do this one of two ways. Um, you can either lead in and come straight down and then go in to your letter or you can lead in and then you can do that trick where you're joining up to it and then go into the connection to the next one. So go ahead and work on a row of F's and a row of H's and then when you're done uh, bring me back and we'll start working on some other letters. All right so we've got those two letters now let's work on I, J, and L. Now I and no, I don't think we did L. So I we've done. So that one again, you want to lead in, come down, and then have a little bit of a lead out. I don't know that that literally can be a thing. You can lead something out, but yeah, that's what we're going to call it. And it does help if you go slow, and it does help that you really concentrate on what the different stroke is. So that one right here, that lead in, that really isn't a stroke. Really, we're just trying to remind ourselves that um, we are going to be connecting letters and so we need something to do that. Okay, so that's our I and then J, um, again, Unless it's the first letter of the word, then more often you'd use a capital, but you'd want to start with a lead in, come down, and then for this one, you'd actually want to extend it because you, you want to be able to connect this to another letter. And for this one, I think one fluid movement makes more sense than doing um, like different strokes like we did up here. And then for L, you would have the option of, hmm, how would you do an L? Well, I guess you could come into a connector like that and come just straight down like that, or depending on what letter you're coming from, if you're coming from like an O, into an L, then you'd need a connector that's higher than if you were coming from like an E or something that's lower. So for that, we would, could do the loop like that. Cause this one also, you can do the loop. 
It really just depends on your style. Again, I thought there were actual hard and firm rules, but the more and more videos that I watch, the more and more that I read about this, uh, it becomes very evident that the whole point of this is the modern version of calligraphy, which I believe there are hard and fast rules. So this one leads a lot of room for interpretation. So go ahead and do your row of I, J, and L's, and then we'll go through the next few letters. All right, now M, N, and U, we practiced quite a bit in the lesson, two lessons ago. So let's go ahead and practice on T and Y. Again, T exactly would be like this, although I did try to make my T with this little upper loop thing, and it doesn't look as, as nice as I'd like it. So for the T, basically it'd be this right here, and then just your cross. So that one's really easy. And the reason why we didn't work on these um, in the lesson two lessons ago is because these involve both above the X height, that middle bar of the E, and they also extend past to the descender line because some of them are going below the baseline. So that's why we didn't actually focus on these uh, two weeks ago. And then for Y, again, I'm hoping you can see this. This would actually be an underturn, and then we'd come down and work on our descender, and then we'd come up. So that one might take a little bit of time, because if you're working in the E, depending on what letter is leading into it, it might connect up here or it might connect down there. So it really just depends on what's leading in. Right now we're just trying to focus on how to make the letters, but eventually we're going to have to get to the point where we have to figure out, well, how do we make this into words and how do those letters connect to one another in a way that makes sense? So go ahead and work on your T's and your Y's if you want to throw in some M's and some N's just for good measure. You certainly can do that. Again, we kind of actually want to use a lead in because again, we're probably going to have to connect either before or after. And so go ahead and work on that and I'll get a fresh sheet of paper and we will get through the last part of the lesson. Alrighty, so you've worked on your practice letters and now we're going to just try a few words just to try to see if we can start training our brain on how to connect some of these things. Again, without having any letters with ovals in it, it does make a little bit difficult, but let's start with the word minty, as in minty fresh. So we would do our M and come in and actually we can go straight into our N. And we'd want to have a tail so that we can bring our T down and cross that. And then our Y. So that is an underturn with a descender. And then finish our letter. And that spells minty. That's not bad. So we could also work on the word lint. Again, if we kind of want to follow, and I know it's like the 11th hour, but again, from what I've seen, they, you would not, you would assume that you would just do an invisible break right there and start the line so that you'd have it. But I actually see people who come to the side because I guess they assume that their downstroke is going to be quite Thick. Now that's not a good pen to do that on. So let's let's test it out with this. Cur Actually, let's test it out with this because this probably has the longest brush, and let's see if that makes a difference. 
So we do our lead in and then we come here and then come down. That's a weird lead in. <laughs> so let's, let's give ourselves a line. I'm working on dot grid paper, but sometimes it's hard to envision. So if we lead in and then we come off quite a bit of ways and not perfectly in line like that, then we really do give ourselves room to really lean into it and make it thick. So go ahead and work on the word lint. So we come up like that and then we come down and right into our N and we come up so that we can connect to the letter T and cross that like that with our little dot on our eye. All right, so we've got minty and lint. Let's do high. And right there. It actually looks kind of cute. All right, let's try one that might be a little awkward. It's probably gonna be a lot awkward. So let's try the word fill. So we do our little lead in and then we'd come down and we'd want to have something to connect so that we can put in our I and then something to connect so that we can do our L. And the reason why this might be awkward is because how thin the I is compared to the L's or the, even the F's and because they're gonna be stacked right next to each other, it can look a little um, you know, a little messy. Let's try it with one of our smaller pens and see if it looks better. So After I start writing a word for a while, the word actually starts looking funny to me. Now these things here should be similar. My connectors and my mountains aren't really good, but I think, you know, it is easier for me to see how, how words are connecting together. So let's, let's try one more word. I'll just change the pen again, go back to black. And let's do the word jilt. Mm. That doesn't look too bad. I had to remember, I don't want to do my tease with the little loopy thing, uh, just because I think it looks a little funny. So let's try this again. And my tendency is to rush because when I do cursive, you know, it's really, I'm choosing that style of writing. One, that's my default, but also because it is rather quick. Think about the letter, bring it down, bring this one down, cross it over, and put your dots. Now that actually leans more slanted than my words normally do. And I don't know if it's because I tried to be fancy. I think going into the J looks cute. I think coming out of the um, T, that kind of looks like jilto, which is not a word. 
<laughs> Although for Scrabble purposes, you'd probably get a lot of points for that. All right, so to finish this lesson, let's go to our E. And we're going to do the word hello. And we're always going to do the word hello because that does give us a baseline because that's the word that we have been practicing cons consistently every single week. So um, let's, because we have the, the lines here, let's go ahead and use them to our advantage. And let's go into the rest of the word. Now, hello, actually, and I, I've been thinking this for a while, is probably the worst word or one of the worst words we can use as our practice because it does have both two tall, wide letters together, plus it also do have two letters with ovals. But because we have been practicing this going on eight weeks now, you probably have just struggled through it and said, you know what, Johanna, we're just we're just going to deal. But we've noticed that these things have those oval things that you told us were really hard to do. It's OK. I mean, you're still learning yourself. But, yeah, no, we've we've noticed we've we've noticed. <laughs> And I have the hardest time, and it's probably because I have not been practicing working on my connections. And hello. And if you really wanted to, and we kind of did this last week, so maybe that's not going to be the last thing. So let's take our word hello. And let's say that, oh, you know what? Let's, let's just go crazy. If you're still here, thank you. Um, let's take our paper mate flare. This is not made for brush lettering, but let's use all of the things we've learned and let's make this look like brush lettering. Now, I'm actually, even though you absolutely cannot tell, I am still remembering to light and then heavy coming down. And then you would go over it again. And then this time, every time there is a downstroke, you would kind of swing into it and then make another line. And you'd swing into it and make another line and swing into it and make another line. And same here. And same here. And if you're very careful and you color it in, then it does take more time because you have to basically do it twice. But if you don't have the tools or you are using something that's on the smaller side and you really want to just thicken up those downstrokes, then this would be a way that you can do that and use the materials that you have. Because even like this, if I wanted to do some shadowing on the thick lines, I could come in and really highlight that. Now I'd probably want to either do this in a better color, although that does not look bad, right? Because then you're really getting that thick stroke but just using an ordinary pen, or if you still have the pencil and you're using that, again, you really get the look of it with just using the materials you have, or you can just really exaggerate the thickness. If you're going to do this though, be very conscious of the space between the letters because I could have done the same thing and brought it close together like I normally would if I were doing cursive. But then it'd be, it, it just, it doesn't give you a lot of room to bring the, the thickness into play. So just, just be aware of that. All right, guys, this is the lesson, lesson number eight, uh, where we covered some of the medium letters, which didn't really involve any ovals. And I didn't mention this in the video 
where we started working on letters. The reason why the first five letters of the alphabet are a trap when you are learning hand lettering is because of those ovals. So your tendency is to start with the beginning of the alphabet, but if you have never done hand lettering uh, or brush lettering or anything like that, they can actually be so discouraging that you don't want to do anything else. So really, uh, if you are still watching this and you, uh, this is your very first video in this series, definitely do your strokes. Thank you, Catherine, again, for the recommendation. Then work on some of the easier letters, then work on some of the medium letters, and next week we're going to start introducing some of the ovals. And we're just going to take this piece by piece by piece and learn the process together. All right, guys, that's it for me for now. Thank you so much for joining me on this journey. And as always, aloha.